A hospital was bombed in Gaza. Who done it? Well, the BBC have come up with a very strange mixture of truth and lies. I'm Granny Opteryx. So this is complicated. As a matter of fact, I made a video and it got so long and complicated and rambling and I decided I'm going to split it up into uh, several pieces. So I've made two already, two pieces, and this is the third, although I may reverse the order in which I upload them. Uh, there was a hospital blast in Gaza City. Terrible situation. And here we have what the BBC said as the news was breaking. Live, hundreds killed in Israeli strike on Gaza Hospital and then underneath, Palestinian officials. And what they mean is Palestinian officials have said that, that it was an Israeli strike. And they said that without checking or anything. They just take the word of the Palestinian officials. It's probably not best practice, really. I mean, even if the Palestinian officials were truthful all the time, they can still make mistakes. And things should be checked with the other side, surely. Now, let's have a look at this. Hundreds of people have been killed by an explosion at a crowded hospital in Gaza City. And I've read this article a couple of times and I've come across some interesting examples of how the BBC are trying not to say something that might be advantageous to the Israeli side of the argument. And this first sentence is one of them. Excuse me. Being killed by an explosion at a crowded hospital in Gaza City. Not in, but at. And that's because the hospital itself appears not to have been damaged. Well, not damaged seriously. Yeah, there has been damage because there was an explosion next to it. Which is, now we might say straight away, why would the Israelis explode something next to a hospital? I mean, if they wanted to go for the hospital, does anyone doubt that it would be rubble in about five minutes? One doctor condemned what he called a massacre at the now uh, uh, Al Ahli Al Ahli Arab. It should be it will possibly Al Ahli Arabi, but yeah, this is how they spell it here: hospital. Uh, that means, by the way, um, Arabs are my brothers. Or yeah, I suppose that's the best way uh, to quick translation. The Arabs are my brother's hospital, while another spoke of a scene of total devastation. I'm not so sure it was total, though. It says here, Palestinian officials say the blast was caused by an airstrike, but the Israeli military say it was the result of a failed rocket launch by Palestinian Islamic Jihad, an accusation the militant group rejected. Well, to quote a famous English person in a court case, uh, they would say that, wouldn't they? Israeli warplanes and artillery have been bombarding Gaza in response to an unprecedented attack on Israel on the 7th of uh, October by Hamas. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Yeah. We were operating in the hospital says uh, Dr. Hassan Abu Sita, a Médecins Sans Frontier plastic surgeon, and uh, there was a strong explosion and the ceiling fell on the operating room. So, yeah, th that wasn't, the hospital wasn't destroyed. There was an explosion and a shockwave, and possibly because the building wasn't that main well maintained, the ceiling fell down. Of course, it could have been a very strong shockwave as well. I'm not denying that. Uh, Canon, the uh, Ahli al-Arab hospital, is fully funded by the Anglican Church, which says the facility is independent of any political factions in Gaza. So, so look at this. This is a hospital that the Anglican Church is funding. Now, generally speaking, when you get various institutions funding hospitals, it's to look after their own people. But you wouldn't find 
many Anglicans or Christians of any sort in Gaza right now, would you? All religious minorities have been hounded out. So the hospital is there to look after the local Muslim population. I don't know where you're watching this, you know, America, Britain, France, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, wherever you are. Wouldn't you be a bit embarrassed if uh, the uh, if a hospital founded by a foreign religion was set up in your country because you couldn't afford to run medical services for your own people? Well, we know what I mean. Billions and billions of euros and dollars go into Gaza every year. Where's the money gone? You know, every single uh, Gazan refugee could be a millionaire now. They could certainly have a working hospital. But they don't because Hamas is using all the money they get for digging tunnels into Israel and, and uh, uh, ordnance. Very expensive stuff, rockets. Canon Richard Sewell the Dean of St. George's College in Jerusalem and one of the church's top figures in the Holy City said it was difficult to get reliable information, yeah, I'll say, about what happened, but that he could confirm the hospital had been hit and that a horrific number of people had died. Um, is that a hospital there? You see, all surrounding is rubble, but the hospital is still standing by the looks of things. So this is where the BBC reports some news and then doesn't comment on it, even though any sensible person might think, hey, hang on a minute. He told the BBC that about 6,000 displaced people have been sheltering in the hospital courtyard at the end of last week. And the immediate question is, why were they there? Well, they were there because they were sheltering. And why were they sheltering in a hospital? Because as much as they badmouth the Israelis, they know the Israelis don't bomb hospitals. Which is more than can be said for their co-religionists. And I am interrupting myself to remind you to click that like button. I'm Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, BitChute and Minds, also Twitter and Gab, all the links are in the description, including links for donation sites. But you don't have to donate. Just clicking the like button is very helpful for my channel and for this video. So, yeah, what else? No, that's it. Please help. And, uh, yeah, back to the carnage. So 6,000 displaced people had been sheltering in the courtyard, not in the hospital, last week. The hospital was first hit by an Israeli airstrike that caused damage and injured four people on Saturday. And here we have another, they said something and then didn't question it. It says it was first hit by an Israeli airstrike, which is a little ambiguous if you think about it. And then this Israeli airstrike caused damage and injured four people. That doesn't look like the hospital was hit, does it? I mean, if the Israelis wanted to hit that hospital, they wouldn't just cause damage, which could be a pothole or a broken window. Well, I mean, it could be as little as that. But anyway, it injured four people. Again, they don't say uh, how the, what the injuries were. Uh, the, and if there's so many people in the courtyard there and so many people in the hospital, an Israeli airstrike that caused damage and injured four people... It could not have been aimed at the hospital. It was probably aimed at a nearby building and there was damage from flying masonry or glass, that sort of thing. At least that's what it looks like to me. But anyway, it was nerve wracking enough for 5,000 people to leave. And then there were about a thousand remaining, many of them invalids or elderly uh, who needed transportation. This sort of weasel reporting is actually not doing the Palestinians any good. It, it, it appears to give them, uh, you know, the, well, the appearance of victimhood. 
but it's not doing them any good. And it's especially not good when you get others uh, embroidering the story rather a lot. Um... Reverend Sewell said about 600 patients and staff treating them had been inside the hospital at the time of Monday's explosion, but that he believed that most of those killed had been outside. Again, uh, it's obviously something that wasn't specifically aimed at that hospital. But um, uh, Sewell, uh, Reverend Sewell, uh, said, there's no justification for this type of attack, accidental or deliberate, and that shows you that... Um, the good reverend is also uh, filled with his own prejudices because there's always a justification for an accidental, uh, for an accident. The fact that he says, says that, it sort of implies that, assuming that he assumes that it was the Israelis who did it, he is saying that Israelis have no right to be there in any way, to exist because accidents happen with people who exist. They don't happen uh, with people who don't exist. And that's basically what's in his mind. And that's not very Christian of him, is it? Yeah, go to Reuters. This is Reuters. Uh, so it says here, Biden in Israel says hospital blast caused by militants. Now, I don't think that Biden would know what day of the week it was, but he will have had uh, military aides there who could look at the evidence that the Israelis put before him. And uh, it says here that the Israelis knew that they, and I don't know, where was it? Yeah, Israel said that the blast was caused by a failed rocket launch by the Palestinian Islamic uh, Jihad militant group, which denies blame. Well, as I said, they would say that, wouldn't they? I don't know, somewhere down here, it says that the Israelis know they had no planes in the area at the time. But the, they would have followed that up with uh, photographic evidence of various sorts. So I do believe that they didn't go for the hospital. More than that, I think if they had gone for the hospital, there wouldn't have been a hospital there. They're very uh, accurate when it comes to bombing and they don't just strafe. Which is why the, uh, the, the, the refugees were there in the first place. Yeah, this back to this BBC thing. Here we are. So the Israelis weren't there. What appears to have happened is that uh, Islamic Jihad or Hamas or whoever they were uh, shot a rocket. They are famously incompetent with these things. They often blow up. This has happened a lot. They'd either misfired it or the thing itself hadn't been made properly. It, it broke up in midair and then part of it fell either in the hospital uh, park, car park or nearby. And then now this they don't say, but I'm um, a bit suspicious. Why should there have been such a terrific explosion? Well, the only thing I can think of is that uh, it hit some ordnance that was also stored in the hospital or in the hospital car park. But I, I don't know that for sure. I'm just guessing. And here's a, a, a lie. And it's an obvious lie this time because it can be disproved. Uh, Zaher Kuhail, a British Palestinian civil engineering consultant and university professor who was nearby at the time, told the BBC that what he witnessed was beyond imagination. No, no. What happened to the Israelis when Hamas uh, invaded? That was beyond imagination. This is not beyond imagination because he's imagining it. I saw two rockets coming from an F-16 or an F-35 fighter jet uh, shelling these people and killing them ruthlessly without any mercy, he said. There were no Israeli planes in the area and they have photographs and satellite imagery to back it up. Now, you might ask, as do I, how come with all that spy in the, spy, spy in the sky stuff, Israel didn't see that Hamas were on the move on that Saturday morning in October the 7th? And I can't answer that. But certainly now there's a war starting, they'll be keeping more of an eye on what's happening on the ground and in the air above it. 
He added that many people had been killed by fires sparked by the explosion and that first responders had lacked the equipment they needed to rescue survivors. And again, I say, why did they lack the equipment? Can it be that those billions of dollars from the EU and from America uh, were being used, um, well, uh, to make the sort of weapons that started the fires in the first place. Or indeed, since uh, Hamas are well known to uh, fire rockets from uh, hospital car parks or hotels in one famous case, or schools, they might have had the ordinance there for those uh, weapons of war. I'm not there. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But I think that's a reasonable assumption to make. This is, the news is still fresh, so we'll find out more uh, a bit later on, no doubt. Right. Well, yeah, that's me talking about the way the BBC... Uh, you see... Yeah, who's this? Uh, Added Daniel Hagari. The hospital was hit as a result of a failed rocket launched by the Islamic Jihad. He said that 450 of the thousands of rockets fired indiscriminately towards Israel since the beginning of the war had fallen within Gaza. So uh, there you have it. And they know, they will know how many of them fell back. Well, they fired thousands. So 450 isn't actually such a bad uh, count. But still, Gaza's quite small. 450 rockets from their own side will have done a lot of damage. OK, a Palestinian Islamic Jihad denied that any of its rockets have been involved. Yeah, well, would we expect any other? OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.